This is devotional number 299, and today's date is August 3rd, 2017. We've been looking at the subject of the cross this week and how it points to the atonement that took place from the foundation of the world. We read, for example, of the purpose of the cross in Philippians 2.8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And in Hebrews 12, 2, we find this important declaration, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. The hour is in uh, brackets, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. One of the nine times the Greek word for despise is used in the New Testament is found in Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. It helps to remember that it was for the joy that was set before him that the Lord Jesus was able to both uh, endure the cross and despising the shame at the foundation of the world. And of course, the, the demonstration in 33 AD was a manifestation of that. It was a demonstration of what had taken place uh, prior to creation. Uh, it was there, uh, that is, at the foundation of the world, that Christ had conquered a sin, the grave, and Satan. And then he took his rightful seat in heaven as King of kings and Lord of lords. Part of the shame that Christ had to endure uh, in the, on the cross, in the demonstration, was physical in nature. Uh, and, and at that time, he was not enduring, he was not bearing sins. But nonetheless, there was great physical suffering as well as mental, emotional, spiritual <clears throat> agony uh, beginning in the Garden of Gethsemane that, and, and leading up to the uh, to his death on on the cross that he had to undergo we find a number of messianic psalms as well as other passages that find their fulfillment in the various gospel accounts of the crucifixion one of these is psalm 69 in its entirety we'll just look at verse 19 for now thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Psalm 109, 25 also reveals, I became also a reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they shake their heads. Also in Job 16, 10 we read, they have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. In addition to the mental and emotional abuses of ridicule, scorn, and hatred to which the Lord Jesus was subjected to, there was again the physical abuses of spitting, flogging, slapping, and the unbearable rigors of the actual crucifixion, which was one of the most torturous methods of execution imposed on human beings. However, there is yet another degradation that the Lord Jesus had to face. <clears throat> he hung naked on the cross as a shameful spectacle for all to see. And that Physical nakedness revealed the fact that he had become spiritually naked, which means 
that he had been abandoned by God and he, he was under the wrath of God, even though this was just a demonstration. Uh, but the, in actuality, that's exactly what happened um, at the foundation of the world. You might recall that in the beginning, both Adam and Eve were physically naked. And just like all things that God had created, it was indeed very good. Uh, as we see from Genesis 2.25 that speaks about them being naked. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It was only after they had sinned that this became a problem since it revealed the shameful spiritual condition that they f had foolishly brought upon themselves by disobeying God. This sad account is found in Genesis 3, 7 through 11. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Jehovah God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah God amongst the trees of the garden. And Jehovah God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? The physical nakedness of Adam and Eve served to expose their spiritual nakedness. Uh, again, a frightful analogy of being under the judgment of God. In order to be the savior of his people, the Lord Jesus had to suffer death and annihilation by becoming a curse, as we talked about in our previous study yesterday. And again, this took place at the foundation of the world, and it symbolizes the shame and spiritual nakedness. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the shame of spiritual nakedness, which is what physical nakedness represents. And, and this is really the condition of all who are unsaved. They are spiritually naked before God. They're naked before the Word of God. Uh, as we read in Hebrews 4, 12, and 13, that all things are open unto Him. And there isn't anything that, and I'm paraphrasing, that is not... Uh, that God is not aware of. And we read about the, the suffering of Christ uh, in this regard in Matthew 12, 4, which takes us back to the book of Jonah, Jonah 2, when he is in the belly or the womb of hell or the grave. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And again, this is referring back to Jonah 2.2. 2, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto Jehovah, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. The anguish epitomizes the, the essence of the grave and is expressed in the Savior's cr uh, cry on the cross in Mark 15, 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Isaiah 53, 3-5 to five, depicts this greatest spiritual shame that only God the Son could experience and overcome. 
He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 